Welcome to the Physiotherapy and Occupational Therapy component of the Inpatient Education Series for Stroke. This presentation was developed for the Inpatient Ed Integrated Stroke Unit at McKenzie Health. The focus of this session is rehabilitation post-stroke, mobility and activities of daily living. My name is Tina and I'm one of the physiotherapists on the Integrated Stroke Unit. This is Heather, one of my colleagues and occupational therapist. At presently on our unit, we have two physiotherapists, two occupational therapists and two physiotherapy occupational therapy assistants. Following this presentation, we hope that you will take away an understanding of the role of physiotherapy and occupational therapy in stroke recovery, as well as an understanding of the journey through stroke recovery from a rehab perspective. Your physiotherapist will help you with getting stronger and moving easier. We help to improve motor control, strength, muscle tone, coordination, balance, and mobility. We provide therapeutic exercises to facilitate basic mobility, walking, managing stairs, and outdoor mobility. When indicated, the physiotherapist will also assess and treat breathing difficulties after stroke. Physiotherapists will also teach use of walking or other mobility aids to ensure safety and independence. Your occupational therapist will help you to return to the activities you do every day, for example, dressing yourself and managing your medications. Your OT on this unit will help you to improve your physical skills, for example, transfers and movement in bed, retrain your thinking skills, such as your memory and attention, manage your daily tasks, dressing, bathing, and toileting, and we will also recommend appropriate equipment, such as a wheelchair or a bath chair. The physiotherapists and occupational therapists work together to establish goals with you and modify them as you get better. They change the focus and intensity of your treatment through the different stages of recovery. Help plan for a smooth transition from hospital to your discharge destination. We may conduct joint treatment sessions when indicated, for example, when your tolerance for therapy is low or to work towards tasks in which you need to meet both OT and PT goals. PTAs and OTAs work together under the guidance of the physiotherapist and occupational therapist in carrying out portions of treatment plans. Their treatment plan may happen individually with a patient, in group classes, or together with a therapist. The PTA OTA ensures that the therapists are informed about your performance in therapy. Group classes on the ISU currently include the arm, arm exercise class, sit to stand, and standing balance classes. Your therapists assess and determine if you meet the eligibility criteria to participate in these classes. Rehabilitation helps stroke survivors relearn skills that are lost when part of the brain is damaged, for example, walking, getting dressed, and remembering information. Rehabilitation also teaches survivors new ways of performing tasks, like sitting to get dressed instead of standing. Goals of rehabilitation include maximizing your recovery, promoting independence, and improving function, assist, as well as assisting in reintegration into the community. There are several complications of stroke. Subluxation occurs when the muscles in your shoulder are weak and cannot keep the upper arm bone in the shoulder joint. You can often feel a gap between the shoulder and the upper arm. Subluxation is a complication of stroke and can worsen with pulling the affected arm, letting the arm hang unsupported against gravity, for example in sitting or standing, and forgetting to position your arm while you're moving in bed. A stroke can damage the central nervous system and disrupt the normal regulation of muscle tone. This can affect how your muscles work. Increased tone in your limbs for long periods of time can cause the muscles to shorten and lead to tightness also known as contractures. After a stroke, muscles can be affected in various ways, causing pain, spasticity, and problems with speed and range of motion. After a stroke, you may have muscle stiffness in your affected limb called spasticity. You may also feel pain in your strong limbs from overusing them and or pain in your weak shoulder. Swelling often occurs in your weak limbs due to inactivity of muscles causing the blood to pool in your hands and feet due to gravity. Other complications can arise post-stroke from prolonged bed rest such as pneumonia, blood clots, and skin breakdown. Some of the things that you can do to help with these and help prevent them include proper positioning can help minimize or prevent pain and stiffness that are commonly present post-stroke. It can also help you to regain movement that was lost after your stroke or limit future problems with movement. If one arm is very weak and hanging down when you stand or sit, it can pull on the muscles in the shoulder, causing pain and potential injury. 
It is very important to support your weak arm, especially when you are standing or sitting up. You can support your arm by keeping your arm on a lap tray when sitting in the wheelchair, by supporting your arm whenever you are transferring or mobilizing, and positioning your arm on pillows when lying in bed. When positioning your arm, try to keep your hand in the open position as much as possible. When lying in bed, your legs should be push positioned straight with toes pointing upward. When sitting in a chair, make sure that your knee is pointing forward instead of being turned out to the side. Please remember to follow your therapist's recommendations for positioning and the guidelines posted in your room. A stroke can cause a lack of sensation or movement in one or both hands. Fluids may pool in your hand because you are not using it, which can cause swelling, pain, and potential skin problems. Your therapist may instruct you to complete gentle exercise and retrograde massage, which is massage in a direction upwards towards your heart. These can help to reduce swelling and prevent stiffness. We recommend that you wear comfortable clothing and proper footwear for your rehabilitation stay on our unit. Footwear should have support at the back of the heel, good traction, and provide support to your foot, for example, running shoes. It is important to keep on moving after your stroke. Early mobilization is important if you're medically stable. It can help to reduce the risk of complications. And remember that mobility is different for everyone depending on your abilities. It may include moving in bed, getting up into a chair, exercising your arms or legs while you're in bed, moving your wheelchair, or walking. Please remember to follow the safety recommendations of your therapist. Regular physical activity can also help to reduce the risk of another stroke. Even when you are tired, it's better to participate in therapy for a short while than to skip your session altogether. There is an increased risk of falling after a stroke. Some of the reasons for higher risk of falls can include muscle weakness, balance problems, decreased awareness or sensation in part of your body, an overconfidence in your ability to stand or walk, confusion or new medication. It is important that patients and families are aware of the risk of falls and that they follow the recommendations of the team. Your therapist will teach you how to get up safely and what you can do to prevent falls. Make sure that you ask for help, especially if you're unsteady on your feet or feeling unwell. Please remember that transfer signs are posted in everyone's room to keep you, your family and, sta and staff up to date on the amount of help you require for transfers. You should not transfer with family members until your therapist tell you it is okay. Government financial assistance may be available for, for wheelchairs and walkers through the Assistive Devices Program, no, also known as the ADP Program. This program does not cover bathroom equipment or other home modifications. The program may cover 75% of the cost of your mobility equipment if approved. There is an assessment and application process which may include a fee. Please speak to your therapist for more details on this. An OT may conduct a home safety assessment with you in your, in your home. Most often this is completed through CCAC services. This could happen before or after your discharge from our hospital, depending on your individual needs. This is to help you safely transition home from hospital. Following the assessment, recommendations are made for equipment and possible modifications for your safety. These may include railings, grab bars, bath equipment, ramps, widening doorways, and stair lifts. Driving is one of the most complex uh, tasks people participate in and requires multiple cognitive, perceptual, and physical skills at a high level. Stroke may affect your ability to drive safely. The Ministry of Transportation has specific rules and regulations regarding timelines and mandatory reporting following a change in medical status. Your doctor may be legally required to notify the Ministry of Transportation. Please speak with your doctor regarding your ability to drive. There are different options for transportation that are available to you, including Mobility Plus, Wheel Trends, Wheelchair Taxis, and Chats Drivers. There are different application processes for Mobility Plus in York Region and Wheel Trends in Toronto. We can assist with, your YRT, with the YRT process. TTC requires an on-site, in-person assessment. There is also the option to complete an application form to obtain an accessible parking permit from Service Ontario. Your stroke recovery doesn't end upon your discharge from hospital. OHIP covered outpatient therapy is currently offered at St. John's Rehab, located at Bayview and Cummer, and, and the Toronto Rehab Institute, located at Bayview and Eglinton. If you are eligible, 
the team will work with you to apply to these centers prior to discharge. There may be wait lists for these programs, which are controlled by each individual site. These centers also determine your individual frequency of therapy and length of the program. Each center has their own admission criteria and assessment process. Our team sends the application and also sends an updated report of your progress upon your discharge. Other options may include private neurotherapy clinics and CCAC. Every stroke is different and recovery is individual. It is difficult to predict the full degree of your recovery. The speed, rate, and amount of recovery a person has varies from person to person and is influenced by factors such as your age, pre-stroke function, type of stroke, and the extent of damage. It is important to focus on your recovery and what you can do to get better. Remember to recognize your own accomplishments. Practice, practice, practice. What you do on your own between therapy sessions does make a difference. So, for example, do your homework as prescribed by your therapist. Be patient with yourselves and loved ones. Recovery occurs over a continuum ranging from days to years. Some final thoughts from our presentation include that stroke recovery continues after discharge from hospital. Discharge from hospital allows you to move to the next phase of recovery. Think of discharge from hospital as a graduation. Thank you.